Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's May 18th. These are your headlines. 50 pound striped bass, like this one, have finally arrived in New England waters. We're also hearing about fluke to 26 inches out of Block Island. And 30 plus pound stripers have made it as far north as the New Hampshire border this week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, we've just got a couple of news items to send your way. And the first one is a reminder about Surfland's Try It Before You Buy It Demo Day, which is this Saturday at the shop up in Newburyport. And uh, it's kind of an interesting show. You know, uh, it's definitely catered to the surf fishermen, although really any striper fisherman will enjoy this show. Uh, the shop's going to have lots of sales. They're going to have reps there. They're going to have plug builders there. They're going to have a bunch of other uh, gear manufacturers there. So it's going to be a very cool event. Um, but the try it before you buy it component uh, deals with surf fishing and um, surf rods. You know, a surf rod is expensive. It's the, it's the most expensive thing the surf fisherman has to buy. And, um, you know, most of the time we have to buy it by, you know, like bending the rod against the ceiling at the shop and being like, yeah, that feels pretty good. But in this case, you can bring your reel or you can use one of the reels that they'll have uh, spooled up on site. And uh, you can actually test cast, you know, all of the ones that you think might fit your style. And uh, that will take all the guesswork out of it. So um, that's it's a major thing, you know, and I don't know why more shops don't do it, to be quite honest. Um, so that's this weekend. It's on Saturday. It's on the 20th. And uh, you can head up to Newburyport if you're anywhere within striking distance of that. Uh, area. You're definitely going to want to check it out. Uh, we will be there, although I will not be there. Uh, Dale, um, my partner in crime here at the New England Edition, will be there selling subscriptions. We'll be giving away some good giveaways there, including the BKK hooks. Uh, so swing by there if you're in the area, if you've got the time, and uh, you're going to find great deals. You're going to get to test cast some rods, and uh, I think you're going to leave feel, you know, if you make a purchase, you know, make a rod purchase, I think you're going to leave feeling much more confident about it. So all good things. Uh, the other thing is the Black Hall Outfitters season kickoff, which runs both days this weekend, the 20th and the 21st. They're holding a whole bunch of sales, including all kayaks are going to be on sale. And they're doing crazy raffles. They're giving away a fully rigged Old Town kayak. They're giving away some Grundon's foul weather gear. They're giving away some Sim stuff, some Costa Del Mar sunglasses, a whole bunch of other tackle and gear. Um, it's also going to be some high line fishermen there for meet and greets. They're going to be, uh, I think there's going to be some refreshments. It's going to be all kinds of sales on all different stuff. Um, and it's just one of those events where, you know, the season is kicking into high gear and this is a good way to sort of usher that in. So uh, that's going to be at their Westbrook location. So you're going to want to head over there on Saturday or Sunday and uh, take advantage of the great deals and, uh, and just sort of kick yourself into this season as it's starting to fire up right now. And now for the second week running, we have a dream boat update, and things are already getting pretty heated, uh, so definitely check that out. It's been a week fish bonanza in the dream boat this week, with eight of the ten spots being filled over the past seven days. Connecticut is putting out some fish, but Long Island is dominating the top tide runners entered this week. And they are an 8.10 pounder landed by Kyle Kraus of Cutchhog, New York, an 8.36 pounder bested by John Beck of Wontor, New York. And the first place fish so far belongs to Kenneth Fay of North Babylon, New York, with his 8.4 pounder. The other important weak fish was the 6.25 pounder logged in by Eddie Terabilly, good enough for ninth place and two points towards his leading tally. 
We also have a new Sea Robin leader at 3.2 pounds caught by Eric Moss of North Babylon, New York, and Eddie Terrabili also entered the fourth place bird this week at 2.38 pounds and good enough for seven points. And Sean Barham hit the bird board as well with a 2.97 pounder holding down third place and eight points. Sean Barham also entered the second place bluefish at 11.85 pounds which earned him nine points it's a battle between sean and eddie for the top spot eddie leads the tournament with 19 points but sean is nipping at his heels with 17. tune in next week to see these two duke it out or maybe you could be the one to knock them down or wrong this week's wild card showcase is for the eighth place bluefish position if you end up on the leaderboard in that position you will win a psionics night wave Nightwave is the ultra low light marine camera that allows boaters to easily spot obstacles and debris in the dark without bright lights or expensive thermal cameras. Navigate safely and maximize time on the water with Psionics. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And the last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which ended yesterday, um, and I have picked my winners. And before I get to the winners, I just want to say that this was the most successful round of giveaways that I've ever done. Lots and lots of photos from all over the place, uh, all different species, and uh, just it was really hard to, to make the choices. Uh, so if you didn't win, don't be discouraged, be determined. Uh, take a look at the ones that did win and uh, up the ante a little bit, see if you can win in the next round. So the first winner was uh, this guy, Calvin Hansen. Great shot of him releasing a brown trout. Uh, this really demonstrates another level of trying to win, right? Um, you know, he busted out the like globe, uh, you know, camera housing so he could kind of submerge half the camera in the water and you get that split screen. You know, you get the guy releasing the fish, you get the fish underwater. Uh, super cool, eye catching shot. Couldn't not reward that one, so he's going to win a darter from me. Uh, the next one comes from Jamie Page, and I like this photo because it's moody. It really captures the essence of surf fishing at night. It's a nice sized fish. Um, and it's very recently caught. This was caught in one of the rivers that spills into Buzzards Bay, uh, which is a hot area right now. And uh, very recently caught fish. And just, just a cool shot. And um, so she's going to get a darter for me as well. Uh, third prize is going to be the Yuzuri stuff. So we're going to do a uh, 3D inshore popper. We're going to do a couple monster shots. So we're going to do a twitch bait. And that goes to Mike Korfeld. Uh, you may recognize this photo from the May cover. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it didn't actually win, you know, the first or second prize, because it was already on the cover, uh, so I want to spread the love a little bit, but I mean, check out this photo. The, uh, you know, the sun shining through the fins of the fish, and just that sunrise feel, uh, awesome, awesome shot, and, uh, totally love it. Uh, last one comes from Mitchell Farron, and, uh, this is just a really cool striper shot from the kayak. It's got kind of that rifle look to it, you know what I mean? Um... And it's another one that I think just sort of captures that moment of catching a nice fish in the kayak. Uh, great kayak photos are rare, too. A lot of guys aren't set up to take them. And so you get a lot of these lap shots, you know what I mean? But uh, this is a great shot. Um, happy angler, great shot of the fish. So uh, he's going to get the no live bait needed stuff for me. That's going to con consist of some paddle tails and some jig heads in various colors. And uh, I'll be contacting all the winners uh, this week, and we'll get those things out as soon as possible. And we're going to start another one. Um, I've got a bunch more of these darter bodies downstairs, so I figure we'll just continue on with those. They seem to be popular, and uh, it means I don't have to, uh, you know, get behind trying to build something. All i got to do is paint them. So uh, we'll do a couple more darters. We'll do some, um, we'll do some stuff from Game On, and uh, we'll do some more No Life Bait Needed stuff. So... Um, we're going to run this one starting today and all the way out to July 26th, so you've got, what, two and a half months or so to uh, impress me, and that's a great chunk of the season, a great time of year to catch a lot of different species, so uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys catch, um, and you, you guys know the rules by now. It's got to be a recent catch, it's got to show you with your fish, and it's got to be emailed to me at deanderson at, the, at thefisherman.com with contest or giveaway in the subject line, or it can be texted to the number on the screen. Uh, send those in to me, and uh, 
We'll see who wins out in July. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now we're going to head into the reports and uh, we're going to go up to the North Shore of Massachusetts. We're going to start things off with James Jukes. We're up here in Lawrence this morning, seeing what all the fun is about up here. And even though we're in the urban jungle up here, talk about a nature's bounty. We got beavers running in the water, osprey coming down, eating the heron. The cormorants are everywhere. And we even have some other <laughs> nature bound things called people. And boy, is there a lot of them. But on the other side of the coin, there is a lot of fish being caught here. Uh, fish over 30 pounds this morning. Uh, but everything else is filtering around down towards the mouth of the river and a little south, even up into New Hampshire as well. Uh, it's been fun so far. And even the freshwater guys are still cooking along. So report is still going strong. Fish are here. The shad bite is ramped up tremendously. Uh, we'll see that until the end of June. But for now, I'm sticking with the stripers. Once I start them, I can't help it. But that's it for now, Dave. There's uh, plenty of fish to be caught just about everywhere. So have a great one. Now, as you hear there, a um, lot, of, lot of nice fish have moved into the North Shore now. And some of those fish have even crept into uh, southern New Hampshire at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but that spot that he's talking about up there in the, in the uh, Merrimack River up in Lawrence is well known. Uh, great spot for catching big stripers. It's got a strong herring run. Uh, it also attracts a lot of crowds, as he said. One of the other problems there is uh, poaching. Uh, we're, and that's been something that's been getting worse over the last five or so years. Um, I think the enforcement has become a problem up there. I've seen some videos of, uh, you know, literally dozens of fish lined up behind this wall or, uh, you know, brush or something like that that they've got there. And, you know, it's far enough away from the guys fishing that, you know, you can't really be connected to your fish. So if the... Uh, if the fish cops come down, the guys are just going to, you know, go home and just leave the fish there. So, uh, best advice for that, if you're there and you're a law-abiding angler, uh, just make the call. I'll put the number here up on the screen. You can put it in your, uh, you can put it in, in your uh, contacts so you can call them real quick. Um, that's the tip line for Massachusetts. And I figure, you know, if we encourage people to make calls, whether it's there in Lawrence or at the canal or anywhere else where this kind of activity is going on. The more people that call, uh, you know, if they get 11 calls from one, you know, concentrated area, they, they can't not go. They got, they're going to have to go. So um, I think that's the only way we can put a stop to something like this is just to all of us call as much as we can. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll see, uh, see these people starting to straighten out and fly right. You know what I mean? Um, heading out of the North Shore down to Boston, Heard about some bunker or pokies, as they call them, uh, down in the Boston area, uh, moving into Boston Harbor and some sizable striped bass with them in the like 20 to 35 pound range. Uh, so, you know, along with some smaller fish. But, um, so that's really starting to fire up now. Uh, Situate Harbor, still holding lots of uh, flounder promise uh, or potential, I should say. And um, the bite's been pretty decent. Uh, what I've been hearing about Haddock is it's not as good as they would have expected at this time of the year. Uh, it started off kind of mediocre and it's kind of stayed mediocre. So um, hopefully it's just lagging behind a little bit. We'll be talking about a great Haddock bite in a week or two. But uh, for now, it's not the best. Uh, jumping down toward Plymouth and then, you know, Duxbury Bay and all the way out to the canal. A lot of stripers on that stretch. A lot of daytime fishing going on for... Uh, you know, a wide range of sizes from like 24 to 40 inches, a couple bigger fish in the mix, uh, a lot of top water action, tons of bait around, North River has been good, uh, get some fish at Ellisville, um, get some fish up in Duxbury Bay. Um, so that whole stretch is still putting out good numbers. Hop over the canal and the striper fishing on the Cape has gotten a lot better this week. Saw a lot bigger fish on the hole. Saw the guys from Goose post some fish up into the 20 pound range. Um, 
And these fish are coming from both sides of the Cape. So, you know, Barnstable Harbor's been good. They've got some mackerel showing up there. Uh, all along the Nantucket Sound shoreline has been putting out some fish uh, and some bluefish over there as well. And they have made the turn now. They've come around the end of Chatham. And um, some of them have made their way into Nostadina. They're up in Town Cove. The outer beaches are still going to be slower. Much colder water out there. That's kind of the last place that really starts to fill in. But um, striper fishing on the whole on the Cape has been pretty good and it keeps getting better. In fact, I uh, talked to a few guys I know that live out there that, you know, just kind of make their seasonal life out of striper fishing on the Cape. And they're saying that this is the best start that they've seen in a very long time, especially with bigger fish. Uh, some historically great spots that haven't had a lot of fish over the past decade have a lot of fish right now. So um, it's a small sample size, but this summer could be one of those throwback summers on the Cape. So let's all keep our fingers crossed for that. Um, switching species, Sisuit Harbor has been holding lots of flounder. There's been some tog in there as well. Uh, I know Jason Colby from Little Sister has been getting them. Uh, Gray Dolphin's been doing well. You can call either one of those guys if you want to get in on the flounder bite. Um, there's a, another place that's had some flounder too is up in P-Town Harbor. So that's another option for you guys if you want to go looking for flatfish. Um, staying on the like bottom species thing, there's scup. There are tatog being caught uh, all along the sound shorelines. If you find any of those jetties or little rocky spots in there. But as you get out toward Nobska, you jump over to the north side of the vineyard. You do the Elizabeth Islands or you go along the rocky shores of uh, Buzzards Bay. Uh, that's where the action really is. Um, these fish are mostly in shallowish water, so figure like 8 to 35 feet of water. Um, you're finding some big scup, you're finding uh, some good sized tog. I haven't heard of anything really big, but they are getting some keepers. Um, so that fishery is popping off pretty good right now. Um, another thing that's going on really well right now is stripers in the canal. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi Dave. Things are still great here in the Cape Cod Canal. The most common refrain up and down the big ditch is from the uh, experienced anglers is that uh, this is great. It's like the good old days. So I don't remember a May like this. It's been terrific. A lot of nice fish caught. There's bait in the water, squid, uh, this uh, bunker, uh, silver sides. And you know, you forget how pretty a, a mackerel is after a long cold winter until you're standing in 10 inches of water and a bunch of beautiful mackerel swim over your boots trying to escape a, pre a predator. Um, so it's been a lot of fun here, uh, very productive from the east end to uh, the herring run and up and down the canal. Um, Chuck uh, Franks caught two 46 inch fish with uh, a Strike Pro uh, white bullet. White's been the predominant color here. White's always a good color, but in the last few weeks it's been terrific. Probably 95% of uh, canal rats using white. Um, and uh, moving down the canal west of the Born Bridge, there's a bunch of guys that always fish together, and Tim Hollywood Petraca and Ben the Fish Flamino both caught fish well over 40 inches one day, and but that day high hook went to uh, John uh, the Chef Schmidt, who landed a 45-inch monster, and Bill and the Girl Prudo on another day caught his second 35-pounder. Bill's caught three fish over 30 pounds uh, just this season. So congratulations to him, a great guy and a terrific fisherman. Um, moving down the canal to uh, Uptuxet, I was fishing there next to Bill Costello. Bill's reeling in fish after fish, and then his, uh, his drag goes off with the sound we love to hear, zzz, 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 and uh, he reeled in a 29-pounder. So congratulations to Costi, that was a nice fish. And when I was, I was fishing there next to him, but down, uh, down the canal ways uh, towards um, uh, Bell Road, John Doble caught a 20 pounder and some other fish. And then uh, it was an east tide. So the fish John was releasing were heading my way. So then John rode his bike up to me and he says, how many did you catch Eddie? I said, I caught five and he caught five too. And he said, uh, it was one of those fish have a hole in the side of his mouth. So I think John, so maybe I did catch uh, some of John's fish, I don't know. But, uh, and moving down the canal uh, to the west end on the mainland side, there's still guys pulling some nice fish right out of uh, where the railroad bridge is on a west tide when you can let your jig move right in the proper position there. And I was fishing a little ways down with uh, next to uh, experienced canal rat Jumpin' Joe England, who's a terrific guy, great fisherman, and outstanding storyteller. 
Joe caught two 35 pounders in the same day. That doesn't happen often with his SP white minnow. Uh, he loads those and modifies them to some extent. And uh, he, he does a lot of uh, good fishing with the, with the SP minnow. Um, and uh, while I was there, Joe caught the smallest striper I've ever seen. He, re he reels it in and he holds up the fish and says, Eddie, give me a saltine cracker so I can make a sandwich. He's a great guy. So uh, I just want to remind you that uh, the great Air Force veteran, Harold Skelton, is having another tournament this year. And uh, he's, it, this one is going to be blackfish, uh, excuse me, uh, black sea bass. And he's, uh, it's called the Spring Fling from June 2nd to 4th. It's a three-day tournament. It's not only the canal, it's all Massachusetts waters. And uh, they're going to have a, uh, a, a award ceremony afterwards, entertainment, a dinner. Uh, at the uh, Quahog Republic in West Wareham. Uh, Harold does a terrific job of raising money for veterans in, in crisis. And so if you, the website is uh, fishingforthemission22.org. And the 22, unfortunately, is the number of veterans who take their life every day in our great country. And um, so Harold does what he can to raise money to try to prevent that from happening. So it's a great cause and a lot of fun. Uh, if not for brave veterans, we couldn't live freely in the greatest country in the face of the earth. So whatever you can do to support them. It's also on the uh, uh, calendar page uh, of the Fisherman magazine. So uh, hope to see you there. And um, so uh, my, my tip of the week is when you take your, when you take your leader out of your little uh, clear plastic bag to use it for the first time, I make my leaders out of uh, fluorocarbon, but some guys use mono, but either one has a memory and, you know, so they're, they're curled up in that bag. So the best way to straighten them out a little bit is just to grab each end and pull it. Don't stretch it, but just hold it tight for about uh, seven or eight seconds. Then I'll help take the curl out and then uh, you can put it on your main line and catch some fish. So until next time, keep your hook sharp and your lines tight. And just finishing up the striper thoughts there coming out of the canal, um, all these rivers, you know, the Wareham River and the harbors too, so like Buttermilk Bay, uh, Wareham River, as I said, Wee Wee Antic, the uh, New Bedford Harbor, Mattapoisin Harbor, uh, Payton Arum, Westport River, all these places have stripers in them right now. And you'll find them of various sizes. But one thing I can tell you for sure, hearing a lot of people say, you know, where are the schoolies? Well, a lot of these schoolies are up in these rivers. Uh, I was fishing up in the Westport River last week with my daughter and a friend of mine and his two young daughters. And we were just throwing the light rod with a little Yosuri know, top knock pencil. And the girls were just crushing these fish, you know, like 24 to almost keeper size. Uh, you know, crush the barbs and just let them have fun. And they were, they were having a blast. So if you're looking for schoolies or if you just want to know that they do exist, they do exist up in these rivers and harbors. And uh, you just got to get up into that shallow water, and uh, that's where they are. And to wrap things up in Massachusetts, we're going to jump inland and do a tandem of inland reports. We'll start with Steve from Steve's UV Lees, and then we'll jump over to Roy Leva. The Connecticut River has cleaned up significantly. Uh, the water is back to normal levels. Uh, it's fishing extremely well. Uh, temperatures during the day are in the 70s at night, 40 to 50s. And that is keeping the river very fishable. Um, the water temps in the Connecticut River are kind of roller coaster riding from 60 to 65 every day. Uh, and 60 to 65, that is prime time for smallies and shad to spawn. Uh, so the smallie bite has been absolutely fire. Um, the shad have moved into the Holyoke area thick. Uh, they have lifted over 88,000. The last time I saw, they were over 88,000. That was two days ago. If I had to guess, I would say we're well over 120,000 fish lifted over the Holyoke Dam already. Um, the striper bite has been absolute fire below the border in Connecticut. Uh, we haven't lifted many herring or, or stripers over the Holyoke Dam. So I think they're still on their way up here. Uh, but the topwater bite last uh, during the weekend was absolutely fire in Connecticut uh, with fish in the 40 plus inch range. The highest was 43 inches that I saw. Um, and I think those fish are still kind of working their way up here. Hopefully the water stays fishable. Uh, the tributaries, both in Mass and Connecticut, have slowed down considerably. Um, 
but the main river is absolutely killing it right now. Um, it's supposed to rain this weekend. That should only help us stay fishable in the next week. Uh, and with the nighttime temperatures dropping into the 40s and 50s and the daytime temperatures only in the 70s, I think we got at least another couple weeks of really good fishing in the river. Um, uh, don't forget the Holyoke Derby is the second weekend is this coming weekend. Um, it's a really good time. If you've never fished it before, you should come down and check it out. It's a circus, but it's a good time. Um, fishing looks really good this weekend. Get out there. Get them while they're here. I'll see you next weekend. Uh, out here on the field checking in, uh, doing a little scouting in one of the rivers out here in Western Mass. Uh, water levels are low in the rivers, uh, which is a good thing because they were all in flood stage just a couple weeks ago. Uh, but that led to some really phenomenal fishing over the last past two weeks. Uh, I can't complain, probably the best, some of the best fishing I've had since I moved out here in Western Mass uh, for just about anything that I targeted. Um, this week though, I will say uh, bass are on beds. Um, I've noticed a lot of buck bass holding, holding tight on beds, uh, which is a good thing because that means a lot of those females have spawned and moved out to a little bit deeper water now, and they should start feeding in about a week or two. Uh, other than that, I've seen some really big carp in the shallows as well. Some of them chasing around each other, some are grazing. So some of them are in spawning mode, some aren't. But the other thing that I have seen in the shallows is some really big pike. I'm talking about some 36 plus inch pike. Uh, they're all spawned out, uh, so these fish aren't gonna weigh much. But man, 40 inch pike is a 40 inch pike. So I might go have me some of that this week. Uh, other than that, you know, striper, shad in the Connecticut River. Um, the shad numbers are down, but the fishing continues to be pretty good. Uh, striped bass fishing continues to be pretty good in the river. Uh, trout fishing is still good. Um, start to see them a little bit deeper water or fishing them early morning or evenings. Uh, our nights are still cool and our days are pretty warm, uh, except for today. I think today high here where I'm at is about 50. Uh, but tomorrow we'll be back in the 70s. And yesterday we were in the 80s. I was in a t-shirt and shorts. Today I'm in a hoodie and pants, but that's New England for you. So just about anywhere you want to fish this time of year in New England, uh, May is probably my favorite month of all because there's just so many species to catch. So get out there. If you got little ones, this is the perfect time to put them on some panfish. Uh, rock bass, sunfish, crappie, you name it. So get outdoors. Catch you guys next week, and I'll let you know how I did. Peace. Over Rhode Island, there's just so much going on. There's so many different fisheries, it's really percolating in Rhode Island right now. But the big thing, of course, is the large striped bass moving into Narragansett Bay. Uh, the biggest fish that I heard of from the bay this week was 45 pounds. Um, that was caught on Mother's Day. And, um, but they just seem to be moving in in waves right now. And the waves are pretty close together. Uh, I've talked to quite a few guys now who have gotten some solid fish, you know, from 30 to 40 pounds. Uh, guys are doing it a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, they're using flutter spoons around bunker schools or deep structure. They're throwing the dock up against the shoreline. They're trolling live bunker. They're, they're you know, throwing live bunker around where they're seeing striped bass. Uh, some guys are chunking for them. Uh, but the main thing is there's a lot of bass in the bay right now and there's a lot of size possibilities. So anything from, you know, mid-sized schoolies all the way up to giants. Um, some of the places that have the highest concentrations of bass right now are like the Taunton River. Uh, there's a lot of fish around Bristol right now. And there's a decent number up around Providence, but that's been kind of dwindling. And then uh, we've been hearing about a lot of fish around the south end of Prudence. And, uh, you know, more fish are moving in every day. Uh, another place that's been producing pretty well is like the passage going into Mount Hope Bay, like underneath the Mount Hope Bridge has had a lot of fish. So uh, tons of fish up there right now. Um, and most of the action is happening during the day, which is pretty typical. Uh, a lot of bunker up there, and a lot of times when there's tons of bunker, those fish just seem to feed with their eyes. Um, so that's been really good. Uh, we're hearing about some weak fish from some of the rivers up there, Appanog Cove, Kickamuit, Palmer, uh, a few other places up there. Uh, weak fish just seem to be getting a little better every year, which is pretty exciting. Uh, for more on that fishery and some of the other east end of uh, east side of Rhode Island, Reports, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecky. Thanks, Dave. Hey guys, got a quick report for you for this week. Um, literally just fished in Mount Hope Bay and did a little bit of fishing in the Barrington River in Rhode Island. Uh, both outings, uh, I guess we did really well. Uh, first off, in the Barrington and Warren Rivers, there's lots of bass still. Uh, mainly fishing at night is good. 
on the outgoing tide. Uh, we've been doing well with uh, fish probably to 26 inches now. Uh, there's a lot of smaller fish up in these rivers, but uh, still it's a great outing for you if you're going to get out there. Uh, I did manage uh, to catch my first fluke of the season off of the bridge and I was using a uh, Berkeley uh, paddle tail and just fishing it on the bottom and I, I got a couple of thumps and I'm like, whoa, hey, it's, uh, and I reeled in uh, my first fluke of the year. So I was happy to do that. Uh, uh, getting to, uh, sat I went out Saturday afternoon and uh, we got out in uh, Maho Bay and uh, I, I got to tell you, there was so much bait out there. Uh, it was almost hard to catch fish, but it wasn't hard to catch fish, if you know what I mean. Uh, we uh, gathered up some bait and uh, put some live pogies down, and uh, it was one fish after the other. Uh, big bass. Uh, there was bass for us um, just up to 40 inches. So uh, if you're planning on going out there, I would definitely uh, stay within uh, the Braga Bridge area in the Battleship Cove. That's where I found all the bait. It was kind of just stuck in that area. And it, it might have been because the wind was blowing from the west and it was just pushing the bait up against the uh, the docks there. Uh, so uh, if you can find that bait, uh, you're definitely going to connect. And uh, we, we do know there are some big bluefish in there too. Uh, we actually hooked into one and we, we broke off and couldn't get it to the boat. So uh, I talked to my buddy Jeff from Bloodline Kayak Adventures and uh, those guys have been doing really well way up inside of the Taunton River, almost in the Dighton line. There's a tons and tons of bait up there and uh, there are some schoolies uh, pretty much on their tail. So uh, if you are up in that area fishing, uh, there are some really, really good opportunities for you to catch some striped bass up there too, also. Um, so uh, if, if you get out this weekend, uh, tight lines, and uh, we'll catch you next weekend. Now let's head out front. There's still lots of striper activity out front. Remember, those fish don't just appear in the bay. They have to swim into the bay. So uh, there's lots of fish all along the you know, front of Newport, all along Narragansett, out to the uh, breachways, and, uh, and beyond. There's, there's stripers all over the place. Uh, a lot of the salt ponds now are seeing worm hatches. You're seeing a lot of small to medium striped bass up in there and a few big ones too. Um, I did hear about one really nice surf caught striper from Rhode Island. Uh, that was caught on top water right as the sun was setting. It was a 45 pounder. Um, I don't know exactly where it was caught. I think in the Narragansett general area, but I uh, couldn't say for sure. But very, very nice fish for anybody, but particularly caught on top water from the surf. So um, that's one thing that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, switching gears to some other species, tog has been a little slower than it had been. Uh, hard to say why, it might have just been the slower tides. We're kind of coming back into the moon now, so maybe that's going to pick back up. Uh, who knows? But uh, generally speaking, at this time of the year, the fish are still going to be mostly shallow, 10 to 30 feet. And... Um, Still a great time of year to target dog, and uh, still got very high opportunity getting a really big one. Um, for more on that and the sea bass fishery, which is going to be opening this week, let's toss it over now to John Lee from JL Charters. We got a new season. Um, I haven't gone out yet on my boat. It's been all pilot boat trips. Um, I'm starting my season tomorrow, so I'll have more to say next week. I hear there's squid around in. Rhode Island from kind of Point Judith down to Watch Hill um, and there's fluke on the beach that bite seems to be hot and cold hot and cold um, there's fluke around the island but again I've been doing nothing but boat work I got a new and improved charter boat I'm excited about uh, but I've been slaving away on that all winter and spring um, don't buy a boat that needs work if you want to go fishing because all you're going to do is work on the boat. Uh, but anyway, I look forward to the season. Take care. Have a good one. And then moving over to Fluke, uh, South County has not had the numbers that we typically expect in the early season. Now, things are starting earlier than they usually do uh, this year for whatever reason. The Fluke doesn't seem to be holding uh, the same promise. There are lots of squid out there, it just doesn't seem that the fluke have found them yet. Uh, I'm going to guess that the fluke will find them pretty soon. Um, but until then, it's a hunt and peck thing for sure. 
The better fluking is out of Block Island. I uh, heard about some bigger fish from like the windmills and the east grounds up to 26 inches or so. Um, it is not gangbusters, but it is your best shot at getting a keeper fluke right now. So um, if you got flat fish on the brain, you're definitely going to want to head out to Block. And uh, that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine today and compete in the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's the Fisherman subscriber-only season-long region-wide multi-species fishing competition to win a Steigercraft and many more prizes. Subscribe, fish, win. Jumping over into Connecticut, um, this is kind of an interesting picture of the striper migration uh, happening between last week's report and this report. So. As you probably or you may remember, there was a lot of fish in the race last week and there was a lot of sizes, you know, 24 inches to like 35 pounds. Um, and everybody was on it. Everybody was crushing them. A lot of boats out there and they were doing it all different ways. They were three-way bucktails, they were diamond jigging, they were throwing top waters, uh, you name it, and they were getting bass that way. Well, that body of fish moved. Uh, we're coming into the moon. A lot of times when you get those stronger tides, bodies of fish move. So, uh, the you know, it's a much smaller percentage of fish in the race right now than there were last week. And uh, that's very indicative of what it's like fishing during a striper migration. You know, they come through in waves. Montauk's had some waves too, some bigger fish, some mid-sized fish. But they come and go as they migrate through. So uh, it's a pretty good snapshot of uh, fishing during a migration period. And, you know, the race will light up again. Uh, it's just a matter of when. Uh, jumping over into, you know, more of the mainland part of uh, Connecticut here, there's been good stripers and good bluefish around the Thames and up into the Thames River, even all the way up to Norwich. Um, so guys are getting those on all different methods. A lot of guys fish bait in that area, so they're doing it a lot on bait. But I've definitely heard of uh, some good topwater action, some guys doing well at night on darters and eels and stuff like that. I haven't heard of any really big bass from that area, but I have heard of some corker bluefish. Um, a couple of them taken by uh, Mikey D'Alfonso, one of our writers uh, from the kayak. Just big, mean-looking bluefish. Uh, so that's, um, that's one thing you can count on. Heading west from there, Niantic Bay has had a lot of bass. Um, and that's one of the places on the mainland side that you can probably find your first fluke of the year. A lot of times they're around Two Tree Channel or in that general vicinity, so um, that's one of the first places you can find them um, on the Connecticut side. Um, but there's been a lot of small to medium stripers up in Niantic Bay and all around the outside of the bay. As you get closer to the Connecticut River, the bass fishing gets better um, and the fish get bigger. There's also been some big bluefish there. Uh, water temps are optimal for top water action, so guys are doing it on the dock and the splash walk and stuff like that. And uh, also, you know, working unweighted soft plastics right on the surface, they're going to crush them that way too. Uh, for more on that style of fishing and some other things that are going on up in the Connecticut River, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey guys, for this week's fishery report, uh, the striped bass fishing has been improving. There's a lot of striped bass on most of the reefs throughout Long Island Sound now, and we've been catching fish that are covered in sea legs, which is, which is an indicator that these are ocean migratory fish. Um, also, these fish were spitting up butterfish and juvenile porgies. Um, as far as bunker goes, there are some bunker around. We did find a school of bunker a few days ago that had some stripers and a few gator blues feeding heavily on them. But I wouldn't say that that's consistent yet, but it seems to be getting better day by day. Um, one thing that's been outstanding is the weak fishing. Um, this is one of the best weak fish runs we've ever seen a lot of nice sized weak fish so that was a lot of fun um a lot of big porgies around too they're they're um going into their spawning areas and um if you're looking for meat and to bend the rod that's a good option as well uh black sea bass is going to open up in about a week and um <clears throat> i would just expect everything to continue to improve uh, hopefully that, that uh, schools of bunker start showing up and we could start uh, targeting them and, and using them for bait for some of the bigger fish. But there are some decent sized stripers now, um, upwards of 20 pounds. So get out there and good luck. And then heading further up the Connecticut River Valley, let's get a little report now from Rowan Lytle. 
Uh, we've had some lovely conditions for fishing over the last week or so, and that should continue into the next week. We've got a little bit of a cooling trend, which will benefit things like our trout fishing. A lot of our more seasonal rivers will get kind of a boost from this as water temperatures drop back down and uh, trout friendly levels. Um, weak fishing has been phenomenal on the Connecticut shoreline. Uh, but as we go into warmer months, and uh, we got a lot of these different species available, some of which are fairly delicate fish. It's important to bear in mind that fish handling is an important thing if we're going to be releasing our catches. Now, plenty of these fish are fantastic table fare, and if you're going to be taking them home, obviously it's not much of a concern how you land the fish or how you handle it, um, as long as you're staying within the bounds of the legal harvest and you know doing so sustainably, that's not an issue. But if you're going to be letting your catch go, it's up to us as anglers to make sure that we make sure it survives when we release it. Uh, if you let a fish swim off and it's likely to die, that's not a really ethical behavior. So when you're planning to release your catch, especially with very delicate species like weak fish, trout, and some others, uh, make sure you limit the amount of time that the fish is out of the water. Don't drag it up onto dry sand and get it covered. You're going to end up removing its slime coat, and that can make the fish very uh, susceptible to significant infections, and they're not likely to survive long after death. Uh, don't hang them from metal boga grips and let them thrash a lot, uh, holding them uh, under significant restraint. Uh, weak fish and other species have very delicate mouths, and that can cause a lot of permanent damage to them. Uh, so... Make sure uh, if you're releasing your catch that you do so in a manner that the, the fish is going to release well and is likely to survive healthily and strongly and be able to continue feeding and reproducing and supporting a wonderful fishery. Uh, that is sort of our prerogative as anglers to make sure we keep these resources around for the future for our kids and their kids after them. But get out and enjoy this fantastic spring fishing we're having uh, and good luck out there. Heading out of the Connecticut River and heading west, um, Fluke is starting to gain some speed on the New York side. So whether you're fishing in Peconic Bay, whether you're fishing Northport or Port Jeff or any of those North Shore locations, the sandy spots that hold a lot of fluke, um, that's your best bet right now. Not a lot of fluke reports coming from the Connecticut side. So uh, everyone that is getting them is crossing over for the most part. Um, a lot of weak fish catches also being reported from the western half of the state. Um, it's not just extreme west either. You know, with some fish coming out of the Connecticut River, probably some fish in the Quinnipiac River, uh, probably some fish up in Milford Harbor area, and uh, of course New Haven Sandbar, West Haven Sandbar, I should say, is always a hot spot for weak fish. But um, you know, I'm looking at the Dreamboat standings, and we're seeing a lot of fish coming out of Connecticut waters. So. This, you know, there's a good number of weak fish being caught in Connecticut right now. And with the moon on Friday, uh, it should only get better. Uh, the moon and weak fish t tend to be uh, pretty well tangled together. Uh, extreme western sound is loaded with giant stripers. Uh, we've seen fish to 56 pounds. Uh, that, that particular fish landed by uh, the future Mrs. Max Finch. That's Lauren Salvioli um, with an absolute beast landed on a mojo. And uh, lots of other big fish, fish well into the 40 pound class, and there are definitely other 50 pounders out there. Uh, for more on that and some of the other fisheries that are taking place in the extreme western part of Connecticut, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. The striped bass fishing remains incredible in our local waters leading up to this uh, May new moon. We've seen fish past 50 pounds this past week, caught by Lauren, and we've seen a lot of 35 to mid 40 pound class fish around especially on our deep water reefs like 11B, the OB buoy, and 28C. The bunker are filling more and more and they're coming inshore now and that's driving fish to become, you know, in the mouth of our harbors where the bunkers congregated and then shallow around the islands. So guys plugging like the dock plugs, bucktails, big swim shads are all finding some nice quality fish in the slot and then over slot. There's actually been a lot of mackerel around too. I've seen reports this whole week, guys snagging them, or like drifting the gill net backside of the islands for bunker and they're getting mackerel in the net. So, you know, sabiki rigs, scotty rigs we have at the shop, those work really well. There's been tons of butterfish around too for the bass, so the bass fishing just remains incredible. To our west, they're still getting good fish from 32A to the weather buoy, Captain's Island, off Rye, Mamaroneck, and to our east, middle ground of Stratford Shoals has been fantastic also. Trolling mojos, bunker spoons, and deep divers, umbrellas work really good this time of year. And we're starting to see our first bluefish show up. They've been mixing around these bunker schools, and that's a lot of fun on topwater plugs. On the freshwater side, the trout fishing remains strong. 
Mike's been out there every week and he's been crushing them. Rainbows, some tigers, and browns. Mianus, Nauk River, the Saugatuck, and the Mill River all fishing well. The Saugatuck Reservoir still has a lot of bass action. Some trout. I haven't seen too many big ones yet, but <clears throat> you never know. Live shiners work really well. But we've seen some walleye and some smallie action too. Thanks and good luck. And to wrap things up in the reports, we'll take a short flight now down to Marina Pez Vela. Hear what's going on down in Costa Rica. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore down here in Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. So yeah, guys, right now, offshore fishing, we had a really, really nice sailfish bite going on out there. Really close to our marina, just 15 miles, the sailfish had been biting. A couple of days ago, I raised 18 sailfish, which was just an insane day. A couple of days later, 14 sailfish we raised. We've been doing quite a lot of fly fishing, so we're not catching that many fish, but only two days back, we released two sailfish on fly, which is an incredible result for our anglers. There's been a few blue marlin out there as well. Our fads, our fish aggregating devices are starting to crank up now. So most of those are 60 plus miles offshore, big, large sport fishers for three and four day liverboard trips. Read all about the Costa Rican fads, guys. The peak season is right now. So also we got a few Dorados out there. We got plenty of yellowfin tuna and the rooster fish bite has been really, really nice. We've caught 12 nice rooster fish in the past week aboard my boat. Guys, we'd love to see you down here this summer. Give us a call. Ben Gilmore, this is Jackpot Sport Fishing and back to you. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully they're going to inspire you to get out there. This moon uh, is one of the most important moons of the year for striped bass fishermen, particularly stripe, I mean, particularly surf fishermen. Um, this is one of those times you don't want to miss too many nights. Uh, it's one of those times when it's okay to be exhausted at work. You have my permission. Um, so make sure you get out there and you give it all you got. Um, you got about seven or eight days here when you're uh, when your possibilities are higher than they are at any other time, really. And this is, in my opinion, this might be the best moon of the entire season for a huge part of New England. So get out there and make it count if you're a striper guy. And uh, another thing i got to say, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer there. We cover everything from New Delaware, from Delaware, all the way up to Maine. We cover all angling disciplines and all species that you can think of in that area. It doesn't matter if it's offshore, inshore, surf, freshwater, travel, fly, surf, ah, it's all covered. Kayak, stand-up paddleboard, everything, it's all covered. Um, so again, head over to thefisherman.com. It's 30 bucks for the year. You get 12 issues sent to your, your mailbox and 26 sent to your email. And uh, it's 30 bucks. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.